Hey guys, and welcome to the Leftover Culture Review. Today we are looking at something a little bit special. It's not just going to be a single game. It is a whole system. Um, it's actually a computer system, the Power Mac G5. Now you might be wondering, how did I get such a cool computer into the games room? How did I afford something like this on my pocket money? And look, I had to tell my mum straight up, like after I reviewed the iMac G3 back here, I'm just like, mum, look, this, this thing's still running OS 9 Classic. It's an old computer. Every time I even try and put an image into pages, it like, it crashes and it has a problem. It doesn't read half the file formats. Look, I need something good to do my PowerPoint presentations in. And mum's like, yeah, okay, I, I agree. Schoolwork is really important. So I got a pocket money advance for a couple of months. Uh, she's just like, here, here's a hundred bucks. Go buy yourself a decent computer. And I'm like, yes, mum. I will. And I found this on eBay, the Power Mac G5. This is the screen, obviously, but it also came with like mouse and keyboard, as well as the massive aluminium box that Apple decided to put their computer in. And this thing is freaking heavy, 20, 25 kilograms. Like Apple managed to pack a lot of computer into this machine, which um, it sucks carrying something like this home because mum wasn't gonna give me a lift, but it was totally worth it. It's got two, two gigahertz power PC processors, 1.5 gigabytes of RAM and two hard drives, um, you know, the slow type HDD discs uh, installed in this bad boy right here. Uh, you might be wondering why, <laughs> why would a retro gaming enthusiast want to have an Apple computer? Apple computers aren't necessarily known for their high stakes gameplay. And look, I covered it back when I reviewed the Apple iMac G3 back there that I really like the Apple operating environment. Um, I use it a lot in university, but it's also really easy and simple to use. It's easy to install games. It's easy to play games. Man, even the mouse only has one button. Uh, th this is one of the newer like dual button mice, but a lot of the games support single click gameplay, which makes it perfect for younger children or people with really bad hand dexterity. <laughs> so I like the Apple computers. I like the Apple games. The iMac G3 back here is also running like the G3 version of a PowerPC processor. I wanted to have the very best computer that ran PowerPC applications possible. Uh, all the PowerPC applications are kind of considered abandoned where so you can just hop online and find a lot, like a lot of abandoned Mac software out there, even some really, really good stuff. And that's the reason why I wanted to have a G5. So I wanted to take a quick look at the cable management system here for the Apple Power Mac G5. Uh, let's start over here with our mouse. We have a mouse, it's plugged into the keyboard. The keyboard is plugged into the computer. The computer itself has one power supply cable and then our monitor. Our monitor is handled through one cable on the back. It is a, I believe it's called an ADB connection. It's, um, it powers the monitor, but it also sends the picture with it. What this means for me is that you can plug in other DVI uh, cables to connect different monitors, but if you want to use this monitor, you need to make sure it's plugged into a computer which can support the power supply. There's no power input for this monitor here, but I thought it was kind of cool that you can actually turn the computer on and get everything booted from the monitor itself. The system itself doesn't actually have to be like on the desk or even in within arm's reach. You can power it up, you can turn it off, using the monitor and for 80 bucks for the whole package it is an incredible price and there's still so much productivity software on this thing not just homework guys i'm talking about video editing software video composition software photoshop's on here after effects is on here illustrator is on here as well as a massive selection of really like old school outdated like fonts and clip art and image libraries and assets that you can use that not many other designers will be looking at. I love the fact that all that is available for someone like me to use and play around in and use in my homework PowerPoint presentations. But when you are designing graphics, when you are doing video editing, when you are doing cool stuff on computers, it's um like the people use so many of the same assets. People use so many of the same like free stock image websites. 
um, having having a tool like this with all this like older stuff on it that not everyone has access to is kind of exciting. It's like a secret weapon, nearly. Just a, it's a really bad secret weapon. But again, for 80 bucks, and the fact that it can play all my favorite power PC applications makes it a real winner in my books. So let's cut to the chase. I didn't just buy <laughs> a kick butt computer like this to do productivity and boring PowerPoint presentations on. I really bought it because I enjoy playing video games as well. And even though Apple isn't known as a particularly good place to play your favorite computer games, I do really like the platform. It's really easy to install. It's really easy to get games running and things work really, really well. Uh, a lot of the time with computer games, things will crash, things will break. I'm missing certain drivers, I'm missing the program files, I need to get other things to run. I haven't had the same problem with the Apple computer. And this is the Power Mac G5. It literally runs any of the Power PC games available. It's about as good as the professional desktops for the Power PC came. There were higher models, but this thing stands pretty much on its own against any power pc application out there and the video games are the most demanding i mean there's not that many of them out there but the ones that are are generally some of the best and there's a, it's a great opportunity to find some of the less known games as well i've had a great time exploring like the point and click adventures over on here on the iMac G3. This thing will run all the iMac G3 games through the classic operating environment as well as any of the newer games as well. So it's a fantastic way to explore what was available on those Apple computers back from 2005 backwards. Obviously the point and click adventure games are really nostalgic for me personally, but I'm a big fan of the strategy games available as well as the first person shooters available for both Mac OS X as well as the classic Mac operating system. And even though computers would run these games better, there are still some very unique applications and programs made for the Apple operating system and they just run really well. And that's something I enjoy, especially when you've got young kids around, kids that you want to be able to set a game up and know that it's not going to crash or break or it's going to be really difficult to get running. One application I was really excited to check out was Final Cut Pro. I used to use it a lot in university. This is Final Cut Pro version 5, one of the last Final Cut Pros available for the Power PC computers. It is a fantastic video editor. Um, I used it a lot, so I'm particularly nostalgic about it. I got to check out version 1 of Final Cut Pro over here on the iMac G3. Uh, version 5 does run really well. It's a fantastic video editor. I just wish that the Power Mac could handle the footage that I'm trying to put into it today a lot better than it, it does. It, uh, it's, it's certainly a bit sluggish, it certainly stalls and, and freezes up a fair bit, so it's not really practical for editing anything on anymore, but if you've got an older camera or you want to use like a lower quality setting, then give it a whirl. It's not really practical for day-to-day -day use, but it would still be a really fun way to edit a few little videos. All the effects are there, all the animations are there. It's a, it's a really good video editor and it makes me feel so nostalgic going back to this Apple operating system from 2006, 2007 and seeing the UI, the icons, the design, the graphics, everything looks like brushed metal, everything looks tactile, the buttons look tasty. It's just really nostalgic to go back and explore that time in in design history. The computer itself looks fantastic, it runs really well, and there's so many applications available. It doesn't just have to be video editing software. Like I mentioned, the Adobe Suites on there, there's so many Apple software products available now for the PowerPC that you can just download easily. And like I mentioned, having access to some of those graphic design files, the fonts, the clip art, not many people have access to that anymore. So it was really cool being able to use some of it right here on the Power Mac when you're just doing silly designs or, or doing something fun in Photoshop or in Illustrator. One thing I did want to say about using the Power Mac G5 today is that it is a really quiet running machine. As well, I've seen a few people struggle with inside the metal side panel, there is a clear piece of plastic that needs to be in place. I guess it's like a dust guard. If you pull that out, the machine starts whirring really loudly. Um, all the fans go off. 
you need to make sure that piece is there before you put on the metal side panel that it's sitting there properly to make sure that it runs silently. The computer's been running behind me the entire time this video's been going and I'm sure that it hasn't bothered you. So the machine itself is really quiet. I think it would be a really good machine still to have for like music production, podcasting, even if you want to have like a, a low quality camera feeding from your podcast or your video back into the computer for you to edit or for you to work on later. I still think there's some pretty interesting practical things you can do with the Power Mac G5. It doesn't have to be just PowerPoints and homework. Don't get me wrong, it's still a fantastic machine. There's a lot of software available out there online, but if you do want to upgrade, man, I wonder if I could, if I ask my mum for like a payment advance, like a pocket money advance for 10 years, I wonder if I could get like a, a new Mac Pro because obviously I've just got the Power Mac, it cost me 80 bucks, but I don't want to upgrade to like an iMac Pro because that'd be just ridiculous, like moving way too far forward, you know? A Mac Pro still hasn't been updated for like, what, eight years, nine years? All right, let's check out, <laughs> let's check out Google. Let's do some Googling right now on the Power Mac G5 and see what Safari version three looks like. So it looks like it's working, but we're missing a few. We are missing a few things here on the home page. So we'll head down to Mac at the bottom. And we can still grab the Mac Pro from the top here. Like, obviously, I don't want to pick up one of the new MacBook Pros or one of the iMac Pros. That's too recent, you know? Like, I want to pick up a professional Mac desktop station that hasn't been updated in eight or nine years. That's more my style. Mac Pro. So, the page is loading, which is good. 3,000 bucks doesn't set. Oh. You know, it's, it's taken me to the American version. But there's nowhere to actually buy it. With Safari version 3, the, the buy buttons just aren't working. Compare model, no, not working. Get help buying a Mac. You can actually chat now. And let's see if we can get some help buying our Mac. So yeah, guys, thanks so much for hanging out and checking out my Power Mac G5 with me. Like I said, it is a really good machine and it's pretty much the only power PC computer you'd need to have. As far as like gaming computers go, it's probably the worst choice out there, but I love the way it looks. I love the way it works. I love getting the chance to step back in time and check out the UI, the old applications, the availability of the old applications and how well they all still work. It's an easy to use computer. The mouse only has one button, like it's not going to be a serious gaming rig, but it's fun to play around in and it's easy to use. I think there's a lot of love and a lot of appreciation for the old DOS and the old Windows formats, 95, 98. There's not so much love for like Mac OS X 10 point, you know, 234. But this was like the pinnacle of what the cool kids were using back in 2006. And I'm just happy I was able to pick up my slice of it for 80 bucks. It was a fantastic price and it is a really beautiful looking machine and it runs really well still after all these years. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in for Leftover Culture Review. Uh, if you want to check out my review on the iMac G3, some more retro Apple hardware, then please check it out. If you want to see some software that actually runs on both Windows computers as well as Mac. I've reviewed Virtual Springfield here in the past. That was a, like, what is a dual compatibility um, game. It, it would run on your old iMac just as well as it runs on your old Windows 95 computer. So check out Virtual Springfield and I will catch you guys next time for some more leftover culture once my homework is finished. Cheers guys.